Welcome back to Orange Nation, hour number two. Polly Steve doing our thing. New edition, the artist of the day, Johnny Gill's birthday. If it isn't love, this is my favorite new edition song, Steve. I'm right there with you, Polly. Really? Yeah. I don't think I like the song anymore. <laughs> All right, let's not waste any more time. Uh, as we kick off hour number two, our, our next guest, probably probably too young for New Edition. Jerry McNamara yeah, joining a little us. Bit. Jerry, you're, you're a little young for New Edition, right? Yeah. You just said it. Don't waste my time here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. Fair enough. All right, well, thanks for coming on. we got a lot to get to with you. Uh, we, we start with uh, the Carmelo News uh, officially announcing his retirement from, <laughs> uh, from the NBA today. You obviously got the chance to play with him. And uh, can you share with us, what, what was it like being a teammate with Carmelo? What kind of teammate was he? He was great. Um, you know, it was just, it was easy. You know, I think the, the great part about playing with him was he made everybody around him better. Um, you know, I did, the, the beauty of his time that he spent here, short and accomplished as it was, you know, he, even the guys that we have these days, you know, I tell them, because there really is no argument when you talk about the greatest one and done player to ever do it. I think AD probably has the greatest argument because he won a national championship. But the, you know, of all the time we spent, he, Carmelo never talked about the NBA. He was completely embedded in what we were trying to do. He was focused on being, you know, the best he could be here. Uh, and I think because of that tunnel vision, he was able to not only just accomplish what he wanted to in the single season, but you know, kind of maximize his talent in that time frame to get better. And, um, you know, I, I think as as our year went on that year, uh, his his single year here, you just saw us kind of get better and better as the year progressed because we were young. But, um, you know, our confidence being around a talent like that just continued to evolve and elevate. We had Jim Beheim at the top of the show on with us, and, and he said that Carmelo was the most impactful player during his time as head coach. He he wouldn't compare him to, to the Dave Bings of the world, but he said in terms of his time as head coach here, Melo's at the top of the list. You, you, you've you gotten to see his impact not only as a, as a teammate, but now as a coach. And, and can you speak to the legacy that Melo left behind and the Melo Center and his connections with the university and and how that championship and the championship you guys won together – how you guys still feel that 20 years later within this program? It's it's difficult to kind of sum up, you know, in reality. I I, I think because of the long story history of the program, uh, kind of hadn't never gotten over the hump in terms of being able to win one. And uh, you have this incredible talent that comes in and is able to accomplish that in a single season. And then, you know, shortly after that, you know, um, you know, just, I believe, probably five, six years into being a pro, um, you know, spearheads, uh, one of the top-notch practice facilities, but, you know, donating money and, and you know, getting it off the ground of, of, you know, giving back right away. You know, I mean, that, that, that's a very short period of time that he was able to accomplish what he did financially in terms of setting himself up in the NBA, but then to turn around and funnel some of that back into the program, uh, I think kind of speaks volumes of his love for the place. Uh, but also the fact that he wanted this place to continue to be uh, right at the top of college basketball in terms of being able to have every competitive advantage to in, in terms of uh, competing with the best schools in the country. So it's difficult to kind of put in terms of, of what he's meant um, because I think it continues. You know, I don't even think it's – it's done yet you know um he, he still as soon as you think of him you think of his time at Syracuse what he was able to do here uh, he's obviously gotten more involved now that he's uh you know away from the game in terms of being visible he was back here this year for the reunion uh, I, I was just with him on Thursday night at an event in Rochester and had a glass of his wine um you know so that was really enjoyable so um, yeah, I think his time and, and what he means to this place means to this place. It's still not finished. Um, you know, there's really not a, a single player in the program's history that has meant more uh, in terms of of you know what this place has become because we were able to accomplish what we hadn't before. As you said, you recently had the chance to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the national championship, and I know a lot of stories have been told and shared over the course of the last few months. And I was talking with Hakeem Warwick leading up to that event, and, and he talked about you know the first time that you know you and Mello were were up at SU, and he said you know I'm, Hacks talking to me saying you know I'm, I'm thinking to myself this scrawny kid from Scranton and this chubby sure. kid from Oak Hill, that, you know these two are the ones that are going to get us over the top, and you know we we, we had a good chuckle about.
about that, but do, do you remember your first impressions of Mello and, and what those early scrimmages were like on campus? Yeah, Hakeem actually was was uh, pretty pretty funny when he talked about that. I, I didn't appreciate that. He said, I mean, you look at Jerry, it's just not much to really look at, you know, but... <laughs> It was it was immediate uh, in terms of Carmelo's talent. You know, we, the old Archibald run when we we got together as a group, we weren't allowed to officially practice. So sort of go over to Archibald and play as a team. And the our, you know us as younger guys were getting sized up by those older guys. And you know we felt like we were on display in terms of having to put on a you know in terms of like hey like what are you guys made of and. Um, you know, he right from the very start of. I had seen him a little bit at ABCD because had both of us had committed within like a few weeks of each other, and we both that's where we met and where we talked. So uh, that first night, I went to watch him, and uh, he was terrific there. But then he had gained like 25 pounds before we stepped foot on campus. Uh, so we added the physicality with the talent. And, um, yeah, it was it was immediate from the from the first time he touched the basketball at Archibald and the first pickup around that. You know, this guy's just, he's an incredible talent. You know, Josh Pace, I, JP is funny. I, he, he talked about, um, you know, he had never seen a talent like that. Um, and, and it's the same as me. Like, I've played with so many great players. I'm so fortunate to have coached so many great players. And um, certainly as a player, to that point, I had never played with a better basketball player than Carmelo Anthony. You know, you say that, Jerry, about playing with the best basketball player. And, I was lucky enough to catch those that 2003 team uh, reunion, and Carmelo said something that uh, caught me off guard, and it it, sh- it shocked me kind of. Maybe you can tell talk about this too. He said that Quet Thoini was the greatest teammate he ever had in his whole career. You know what was Quet like for two young kids like you? I mean, it's funny because even, you know, Q, we call him Q. I think it was because his name was spelled, you know, with a K, K U E T H, and every game coach write Quest on the board with a Q. <laughs> I don't know. If, um, you know, but he, it's funny because I, I would hear Q tell the stories, and he's like, you know, these naive young kids called me grandpa. Like, I was only 22 years old. Like, you know, these little punks, you know what I mean? Um, you know, but he was just coach was really hard on him and coached him hard and I think for us as a young group we knew what he brought to the table and he could still kind of take the criticism uh and and, you know remain in character in terms of being that vocal leader of a young group and I just think we always admired him you know we admired for the way he worked behind the scenes um there was no nonsense about him he came to work every day he put in the time he showed us what it meant to be consistent and um you know, his demeanor was, was incredible. Uh, and he was the most selfless person. It didn't matter if he scored double digits or not, but I recall when he did, we were pretty damn difficult to beat. I know that. Um, but he, it didn't matter. None of that mattered to him. It was about winning basketball. Um, and I think a mentality and attitude, a player like that, especially as a senior, and, you know, that, that mentality is infectious. And I think for a young group, um, you know, being selfless was, was incredible to follow. All right, Jerry, we got you for a few more minutes here. We, we do want to ask you about some, some Syracuse basketball uh, currently taking place. And uh, what's the, what have the last couple of months been like? Um, you know, re- recruiting's been going well. You guys have been very successful out of the portal. Just kind of getting your feet wet and established with, with Jim Bam stepping down and, um, you know, moving forward now with Adrian as the head man. What, what have the last couple of months been like for this program? It's been busy. It's been really busy. Um, this time of year used to be kind of the time of year that coaches got a little bit of a break. That all changed when um, the transfer portal rules changed. Um, you know, so everybody's either tra- trying to figure out who's going to be staying, or in a lot of cases, figuring out who you're going to go and try to get. Uh, so it's been somewhat of a whirlwind in terms of that. We've been really lucky in terms of not lucky. We've done a good job in terms of the people that we've recruited and put in place as a young group to be able to retain and move forward with. Uh, feel confident with the guys and the work ethic in terms of what we're trying to become moving forward. And I think when the transition happened, we moved quickly in terms of having meetings with these guys, sitting down, making sure they had a clear vision of what we were trying to do. And um, they believed in it because they should. You know, we're, we're, we've got great relationships with these kids. And, um, you know, then it was about going out and, you know, hitting the portal in terms of, 
uh, you know, getting some really good players that I think in most cases we've had, you know, relationships with for years, which helps um, in recruiting where you can go out and recruit a guy, you know, obviously get a chance to meet their families and develop these relationships. And, you know, if it doesn't work one time around, if they're looking for a different situation, there's familiarity in that. Um, you know, we've been able to do that with guys like, uh, you know, the guys that we've got. I, mean, I don't know who signed what yet, so I'm not going to put any names out there. Um, you know, but we've been done. We feel, we've done well. We feel really good about what we've done uh, in terms of putting together a, a roster that we feel like we can compete with. You know, how excited are you about this? Your your group looks a lot different than it has in the past couple of uh, years. I'm, yeah, I'm really excited. Um, you know, I, I feel like we're, we've obviously got talent. Um, but I love the versatility in what we have, uh, length, athleticism, speed. Um, so there's a lot of different pieces in terms of uh, what you can do, I believe, uh, on both ends of the court. You know, I think, you know, from the guard position, it, it, it's the versatility that probably uh, excites me the most in terms of guys that can handle, create. Uh, the, the one thing above all else that I like about our group is, that, you know, we just talked about selfless. You know, I think we have guys that try to make the right basketball plays. Um, our ball movers, you know, they could be isolation scores, but they also move the ball as well, get the paint and create, make plays, make reads. Um, so it's exciting. You know, it's it's a strange time of year when, when this time of year comes around now for us just because it's stressful, you know, complete transparency. It is. It's stressful because you're out there recruiting, you're trying to retain, and um, at the whole time you're still trying to maintain the vision of what you're trying to become. And, and that all comes down to the pieces that you can get. So um, just just excited. You know, it's really exciting because right now we feel like we have a complete roster that we can work with. And, um, you know, it's exciting to, to move forward. All right, we had Griff on the show last week, and I, I asked him about Jesse leaving and not the circumstances around it, but just personally how tough that is You know, when you work with a kid every day for four years and, and then you see him go to a different program. I, I want to ask you the same thing about Joe, just from a personal perspective. Um, you know, How difficult is it to see him kind of move on, and, and not only that, but stay in the conference, and, and you're going to see him twice next year. You're going to have to go up against him next year. Yeah, it's it's tough. I You know, you guys know me. You know how how much time I spend with, with, uh, the guard group and, um, Joseph is, I love him. I mean, I love him. I, he's, he's such a wonderful kid. His family's incredible. Um, and that's the really difficult part, um, in this whole thing. You know, I've always said that this business is such a gift and a curse at the same time you get to spend, uh, incredible amounts of time with so many wonderful people, but then at the end it ends at some point, you know, and, uh, that's hard to deal with. And, you know, the one thing about Joe is he's done everything that we've asked him for, you know, for four years. He, you know, he, he stabilized the point guard position when we needed it. Um, you know, he moved to the two guard position. He never missed a day. Um, it's incredible. He, he was, he played through injury. Uh, he was reliable. Um, he, he never missed a workout. Uh, he showed up with me every day, an hour before practice to work out. And most of those days that he did that, he had already come in earlier in the day because he had a 45 minute to an hour routine that he did on his own. Um, so you're talking about really two hours of individual work prior to even practice. And, um, you know, the kid, the kid, I just respect him. I really do. I respect how hard he works. I respect how much time he puts into it. And off the court, you're not going to find a better person. I think he was a great representative of who you're trying to become as a program. Joseph Gerard represents you as well as any player can. Very well said, Jerry. Paul, you got another one? Yeah, I'm going to, I, I'm going to follow up uh, with a question that I asked Griff when we had him on, too. He said the difference was that Coach Autry's office doesn't feel like the principal's office. What's the biggest <laughs> difference between working with Red and Jim Beheim? I think Griff has too many flashbacks as a player. That's maybe, <laughs> I think that might be where his his you know principal re- reference comes from. Um, you know, it's it's a little bit different. You know, it, it, in terms of you know we've worked so closely. Uh, you know, these these last you know really over a decade, last twelve years uh, as assistant coaches, and you know you have I mean, you think about over a decade of work together. How many different basketball conversations you've had? Um, behind the scenes where it's just the two of you, whether you're out to dinner or you're in a hotel room or you're on the bus or you're on the plane or you're coming off a difficult loss, like so many different scenarios over a decade where, 
you know, you've, you've had so many basketball conversations. You, 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 we have, I'm looking at a whiteboard at my office right now. There's a play diagram down the, on the board right now. So there's so many different ideas and, and conversations that we've had. Um, I think the biggest thing, um, you know, probably the biggest difference I, I'd say was more, a little, little bit more close in terms of uh, having more fingerprints of, of every day. You know, coach was so established and so comfortable with what he had done as a coach. And, you know, you were, we were already playing for him. So we're walking into what he had already created the zone, uh, you know, his method and his sets. And, um, you know, now you're taking, taking over something and Adrian's going to have his ideas and, um, you know, we've already kind of implemented the defensive sets and, um, gotten a head start on that. We're going to have to re- obviously retouch on it and, uh, with new guys coming in that we haven't had a chance to, to get our hands on yet. So, an offensive piece will come later. So, you know, the biggest thing is going to be a lot of change and a lot of conversations being had. And um, it's not a principal's office, but it's still a boss's office. You know, it's 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 just a little bit different because coach, obviously, we play for him. It's a different dynamic. All right, uh, Jerry, last one for you. We mentioned, uh, you know, Joe not coming back, Jesse not coming back. We don't know if Judah's coming back or not. Um, just your thoughts on, on his situation and coming out of the combine, and, uh, you know, is there anything you can share with us in terms of, you know, kind of your advice to him as you as you support him through this process, and he's got obviously a big decision to make here in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I'd say let's, let's – I'll put it this way. My advice for all of us, because I think too many times everybody has an opinion on what a person should do. Um, and the one thing that I know for a fact, and I tried to explain this to someone recently, you know, who are we to say what someone should do when they're literally one step away from what they've always dreamt of? And um, Judah's right there. He's knocking on the door. Um, we're really, really supportive of what his decision's going to be. We're not sure yet. Um, you know, I've wa- I watched everything he did at the Combine. I thought he was really good. Um, I thought the first game he probably could have been more aggressive, but he was really efficient at seven assists. And then the second game I didn't catch as much of, but was obviously a little bit more aggressive. And, um, you know, it's funny people would say, oh, well, he went to the combine and, and, you know, in the first game didn't take a three. That's all they want to see. And I'm like, well, he made every right play too. So, you know, he doesn't have to force up threes. I think there's value in that as well. So, you know, I, I think the biggest thing is he's, he's, he's knocking on the doorsteps of what he's trying to accomplish. Um, you know, we're going to support him in that process. And, um, you know, he's put himself in a good position, and now he's got a decision to make, and we're going to support it. Uh, I don't think there's a right or wrong decision. Um, you know, same same as a guy like Cole Swider. I don't think there was a right or wrong decision. He and I sat down and talked about that, about when he wanted to start his professional window. Um, so that's a decision Judah and his family need to come to and his agent. Um, you know, I, I believe in him fully, fully hundred percent, regardless of what he does, he comes back. I believe in him. he makes that step and tries to make it. I believe him. I think he'll make it, um, because he's a competitor and he's very, very talented and he's going to put in the work, you know, to, to improve on areas that maybe they might not look as, as strengths right now. So, um, you know, he's, he's, he's a step away and, and, you know, whatever decision he decides to make, we're going to support him. And, um, you know, that, that's just the way it should be. All right, Jerry. Great stuff as always. Uh, I know it's been a busy time. Thanks for finding a few minutes for us. And uh, enjoy the, the start of your summer with uh, with your family. Hopefully you can enjoy some downtime. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking uh, looking forward to maybe getting out on the links here. You know, I, I, think, I, I think I need to hit the ball around a little bit. No, I don't care if it even goes well. Let's just hit it. <laughs> yeah, a, a bad day on the golf course is better than a good day in the office, right? Is that no, what they say? Yeah, well, that's just... I like being here, too. Let's not get crazy. That's true. Jerry. That's true. All right, Jerry. Be well. We'll talk soon. Sounds good. Thank you, guys. All right. Jerry McNamara quoting, joining us here on the show. You're quoting bumper stickers to Jerry McNamara? <laughs> I, I like it here, too, most days. Most days, I like it. here. Most days. All right. Uh, phone lines open the rest of the way if you want to check in. 315-437-7644. Time out here. We're back after this. Honey. 